Uh, hello, this is a note about a tidal current forecasts from NOAA's Ocean, no, Operational Forecast System, OFS. And that is, provides a tidal current forecasts on a small grid, um, in a grid, grib, grib format. So you can see it in a, in a navigation program and do routing with it and so forth. And I've just realized a very nice way that you can test it and evaluate it and get to learn how it works. Now, step one in that process is luck, is luck grib because that, to my knowledge, is the only place, luck grib is an app for Mac or iOS, it's an inexpensive, it's $30 app, and it's absolutely remarkable weather program. And it also has other features for using offshore. You can do, uh, you can get the data offshore and do routing with it and things like that. But right now we're looking at just the, the basic the $30 app, or also keep in mind, please, it has a 14-day trial. So you can try it out and see if you like it. But it has a 14-day trial on the Mac version and on the, um, on the iOS version, and it's uh, just an amazing uh, weather tool, uh, primarily because it, well, not primarily, but in part because it offers all of the best weather data. Some of the best weather data the U.S. produces can only be downloaded in GRIB format from uh, LuckGRIB. So that's my uh, my testimony for the, this uh, program. But So right now, though, what we're doing, I'm using LuckGRIB for now just to download the data. So I draw, and then you'll read the instructions how to do I draw a box like that, and I say new forecast, and I download the, and I download the GRIB. It just takes seconds. And so once I have it loaded, once I have it loaded, then you can use the uh, the display and luck grib itself. It does not have charts. It has this base map here. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area here. And then you can see these tidal currents moving around. And you may, in some cases, learn what you need just from looking at that. It has one of the nicest, uh, you know, graphic displays of the currents and, and the distribution and so forth. However, LuckGrib also will let you export this data. So you can go and right click and say export the file. So I have exported that file and then I loaded it into, uh, into QTVLM. This is a, uh, also a remarkable program that we use in our marine weather course and in our uh, electronic navigation, electronic chart navigation course. So I've loaded, uh, I've loaded this um, grib file of the currents in here. Oh, then, okay, so that, oh, excuse me, that looks like that. So I loaded it in there and that looks like that. And then I've turned on this bar. This is a time scale so I can actually change around and see how the currents behave. So you see, this is exact same data I was looking in LuckGrib, but it doesn't have, it has some color overlays and so forth, but, but that's not, it's not, um, not what I'm at, what we need right now. Um, we just want to look at the data itself. So now, then to do the comparison, here's what we can do very nicely. We just turn on the current stations. So now, here's the NOAA tidal current stations that you can go look up on data, I mean uh, at the NOAA website, tidesandcurrents.noaa.gov, or you can use a program like QTVLM, which has the proper harmonics. You want to be sure that your navigation program has a proper harmonics where you may get the wrong data. But this program does have, well, we load into this a proper harmonic, so these are the right data. So I can go and click this, and this is the exact data you would see if you went to NOAA and looked at that. And sort of interesting terminology that I notice NOAA evolving, or maybe established, is they call what they produce here on this table, they call these the predictions. So these are the, the, the what we normally think of as the tidal current predictions. They used to be published in an annual book. They stopped publishing that two years ago. So now if you want official NOAA tidal current predictions, then you have to go to the NOAA site and make your own tables. The tables uh, 
Um, and that's a way to get the official data. So, but that's the predictions. Now, but now we're loading into this, which is really, frankly, a superior way to do your tidal currents. So, um, I've got the data from LuckGrip. Now, once you get it from LuckGrip, you can load it into uh, essentially any program that will display vector tidal, vector currents. RTOFs or OSCAR, things like that. So now I have these currents located, and now I can compare directly. I can compare directly. Let me go back here. Let me see, maybe I'm going too fast. Uh, let me start comparing here. Okay, so now that's up. You see the, the arrows in the back I've set to be scaled. So that this is peak flow. This is now the peak flow. And you see that these directions at the peak flow with the model, with the model and with this uh, predictions, they're all pretty good. I can look inside the bay here, you know, and so forth up here. And look, now they're coming down and they're, they're all coming down and they agree pretty nicely. Now the values, uh, let's see, this value here, oh, th this program, uh, look, um, QTVLM shows the data at all depths. So there's 14 feet, uh, and it's about like 0 0.9, 0 0.8 knots. That's the prediction at this station. Now I can just bring my cursor out here and read down in the bottom. Oh, and that's 0 0.8 too. So that's agreeing in both the speed and direction. Often the models will be slightly bigger, slightly stronger in the currents. Okay, so now we go back here. Well, I just want to show this. Then anybody can download, and these currents are, the model currents are for most of the country. You can look online. Where you learn about it, oh, let me back up one minute here. If you want to learn more about the model, we're going to go back to LuckGrib. Let's see here. Yeah, go to luckgrib.com slash models luckgrib.com slash models, and you can read about these. This Well, obviously, NOAA has their own websites about it, but Luckgrib has these data, the information sort of summarized here. The name of it, that the model is calculated every six hours. It has a resolution of 0.2 nautical miles, uh, and they calculate the data every hour, actually, I think San Francisco's every hour. Yeah, oh yeah, 49 forecasts out to two days. So they're calculating it every hour. And then the delay, this is the latency of the data. So if they do a calculation at 12 o'clock, Zulu say, then you won't be able to get it till 1400 and three minutes. So here's where you read about that, uh, luckgrib.com slash models. Now let me go back here, and I'm essentially done. So here's what I want to show you. So look, remember that these stations, these stations that NOAA has that do the predictions, like if I go here, details, these are the predictions. That's what we look up in the, we used to look up in the tide table. There's, there's the peak, uh, what's that, the flood, then the peak ebb, and so here's the value right now. I can look at different times. I can look at... I can look at different times, I can go different dates, you know, sunrise, sunset, twilight, and so forth. So that's all there. But these are reversing stations. These stations, at, in other words, when you look at this, you're going to see two directions. That's the flood direction, that's the ebb direction, right? Like that, flood and ebb. But these real, the real world doesn't reverse in open areas like this. It'll reverse going one direction, then bang around and go the other direction in narrow channels. But out in this open water, let's look at the model here. Now we just, I'm gonna get the clock going up here, and I'm just gonna slowly increase the time. And you see it's getting weaker. Now you see what happened there with the, well, I'm looking at say this area right here. And it's a little out here in the middle here. Let me actually go over here once we see more what's going on. You see, so that reversed, oh wait a minute. Now you see, look, even the model 
right out here in the ocean, right here, the model and the, and the data are not agreeing exactly on that direction. But you see, this station doesn't have the opportunity to tell you these different directions. It has only two directions, which is the mean. When you look at the description of the tidal current prediction directions, they refer to the mean ebb direction and the mean flood direction. Look at this. See, this current's got a nice big eddy going on out here. Oh, we see that in the stations, actually. But now you see it in much more detail. So you can go and then just uh, swirl this around. Now we're back at the peak flow. Everybody's happy and agreeing. Uh, oh, now it's gotten pretty strong flow everywhere. But look how it agrees. But now as you, as you sweep, as you change the model, as you change the model, you'll see how the real currents are changing. And they're going to line up. You see, now we're back to the peak flow in the other direction. This is the flood. Now the flood, you see, is all lining up in the peak direction. They're all lining up again in the peak direction. But, okay, so that's the story. And that's very easy to do. You use LuckRib, you download the data, then you load it into... Now, you may have other programs that, will, that you would want to use, maybe instead of QTVLM, but it has a really very nice way to do this because at any one of these, you just click it and you can see values. Or you put, just put your mouse on it while you're doing your studies and it'll tell you the data. All right, that's the, that's the exercise I just sort of ran across this technique here by accident and it's it's really powerful way to convince yourself of the value of the OFS uh, data and sort of indirectly the value of these two these two programs the luck grib and uh, QTVLM